Good evening, good evening. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Thank you. So we're at the BBC Berkshire headquarters um, in Reading, and we're basically about to go on radio live on air at 9 p.m. to speak about Maveril, which is the company, our esports company and gaming company, and talk about the state of esports in the UK and gaming overall. I'm joined by Floyd. Okay. I'm like Floyd. Yeah. Sporting the Maveril top, you know. <laughs> and Quinton. Hello, nice to see you. Good, good. Ready for this? Ready for Mavro in 15. I hope you're ready in Moisin as well. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, man. Mm. Trying to come through with a Gary V flex. <laughs> 2019, the year documentation, boy. Document versus create. <laughs> you know, everyone out there trying to get their exposure up. That's right. It That's can be right. difficult even for the most creative of us to you know, create every single day. So sometimes it's just better to document your journey and what better than behind the scenes, you know, showing the process and the progress. Correct. And that's what reality TV works. Essentially that's what vlogging and you know documentation should be. It's reality TV. So you're seeing the realness behind. No nothing's being scripted. It's you know, keeping it raw. And imagine seeing your favourite company before it became your favourite company. So before Netflix became the giant juggernaut that it is today, imagine seeing what Netflix was as it was starting out. Mm -hmm. Same with Apple, the same with PlayStation, the same with Xbox, whoever you love. And that's what we want to try to do. And it's the same for all you singers and aspiring actors and actresses and vloggers and YouTubers and business people to document your journey. We were invited in, so it came out, it was it was nice. And me to being a, a yes and an optimist, I just said yes straight away. Um, we don't. <coughs> Ideally, I'd had some stuff I'd like to be able to promote at the moment, but we can't necessarily speak about this evening. Um, but we'll, we'll try to reschedule something for that. But just to let the people of Redden local Berkshire area to know about Maverick, what we do, who we are, why we're about, and how big gaming is and esports is in the country. And actually, that for the parents scared of their, you know, children or playing too much games or whatever else, there's actually a lot of benefits to it. So yeah, that's what we're trying. To and don't don't feel pressured as well to even answer straight away sometimes. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, you need yeah, a moment to think. think. That's calm, isn't it? Like, yeah. And the thing is, there's nothing wrong. Same thing I was saying to Oz. If, if you don't know something, or you're unsure, like, it's an opinion piece. So you don't have to know what you're up to. Yeah, that's a yeah, no, fair enough. Yes, personal. Of course, because it's, it's an opinion piece. Yeah, but you know, you know I'm just going to be like, based on what I think, but check. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was about to say that as well. Yeah, I don't want to say like, like, what do you think? What do you think? And then Jeff steps in, yeah, do you know what? Do you know what? Do you mashing it up? All, 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 all of your stuff about... Do you know what? Do you know what? I was so crazy. All, all, your, all your stuff that you do, like, was talking about a player that really wanted and stuff like that. Um, yeah. yeah. That could come up. So you feel like, like you might say, what's the future of gaming? What's the future of VR? Do you know what? It's actually mad because... I actually... Do you remember when you asked me, you didn't really know what the questions are about? I actually prefer not to miss no. You know what? I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm probably better with not knowing. I'd like, I'd like to just. Spin I just it need off. to come off. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, do you see what I mean? Like, yeah, just no, come, he, just come like, straight like, off. Like, 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 yeah, yeah. It, it, it just needs to be. You mean more natural? Yeah, like, like it's more yeah. natural. Not, not rehearsed. Because that's what it is. It's rehearsed. It needs a ten question. Because the conversation doesn't really take place like that. You know, can it span the spin off into other things? Yeah, you know. Yeah, this is little stuff for the Marvel peeps that are following and watching this. When you see this, um, we're trying to do something real big at the moment. A nationwide tour all the way from Scotland, all the way down to Brighton, north to south. Um, coming to the major towns and cities to basically give you an ultimate gaming experience. I can't say much more than that, but it's going to be serious. Mm. <laughs> it's it's going to be serious, trying to pull that up now, trying to line it up now. Um, and we're working you know, in talks with some major organisations. One of them is a massive Premier League football club can't say any more than that as well at the moment um, and once that all finalizes it could be major and hopefully as well we should be able to do an early AAA release pre-launch event from February we're in talks with the publisher and it's one of the biggest games of the year that's coming out in the first quarter and we're trying to do a pre-launch event so you guys get your hands on it before anyone else and you can come and play it with Matt from. <laughs> is there any trouble? I think, I think, I think, do you know what is? I think, like I said, said it before in Better Italia, I think what we should uh, probably focus on is, well, I know I'm focus on is, um, let's keep it personal. Yeah, I think the personal just keep it personal. Because how you start thinking of it in my house, yeah, yeah, this is my van games, yeah, um, talk about the better experience and get out of the stress, yeah, that's exactly what I was And as a parent as well, for you. 
you can bring I think, yeah, if, that, if, yeah, if, if the I fear think. of gaming comes in, you know some parents are scared now, my child's addicted to Fortnite, mm-hmm. addicted mm-hmm. to this mm-hmm. and so on. You could talk about it from a parent, parental mm-hmm. perspective on whether you think it's positive or harmful with your daughter's playing Fortnite. I know it's harmful, man. I'm kicking them down. Just sound, just keep them that little look. Like, yeah. Yeah. Stepping up. <laughs> 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 That's mad. You probably got. They probably said the coming because people are funny. I've been on TV briefly, but that's probably about, about it. Nothing, nothing major. Um, yeah, probably that's probably about it, really. Yeah, but it'll be it'll be good. It'll be a good experience. I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward to you know the experience and hoping that we'll have a lot more exposure like that on the on the um, lot of media platforms. So you other than a normal like social media, and you know, you, I think we keep, we need big, you know, yeah, way more exposure in terms of like BBC, you know, um, <coughs> uh, TV, all that kind of stuff. I mean, this gaming market's massive, and it's got absolute um, potential to um, for us to grow as a company and uh, to do well. Um, it's untapped, untapped. Go ahead. <laughs> go through, go through. So, Rita, you'll be talking to. Rita. Rita. Lovely Rita. Rita, Rita, Rita. Lovely. Oh, the excitement begins. <laughs> Jeez! Hello. Come on, come on. Thank you, because I thought it was going to be fun. <laughs> okay, alright, okay. Nice and close. So you get nice and close. Nice and close. Yeah. You need to. It's, it's Quentin, right? Yeah. Quentin, 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 it is indeed. Welcome along to Extra Time on BBC Radio Berkshire. Eight minutes past nine on this uh, slightly snowy evening. I hope you're staying safe out there. And uh, if you stay, stay at home, put the wireless on and listen to BBC Radio Berkshire's Extra Time. And if it's the first time you've listened to us, well, welcome along. Where have you been? But uh, just to introduce you to the world of sport at BBC Radio Berkshire. First hour of the show, it's all about Reading FC. So if you're a Reading FC <laughs> fan, we talk about all things going <laughs> on right now we're ready to see and there's plenty to talk about and talking of which I can tell you that, that there's been some big news this evening actually before we talk any other sport let's talk about Reading FC just for a moment Nelson Oliveira has joined the club on loan from Norwich City FC until the end of the season that's Nelson Oliveira has joined from Norwich City uh, on loan until the end of the season we'll be looking for as many goals as humanly possible from Nelson Oliveira, Portuguese international, uh, slightly out of favour at the moment at Norwich FC, but welcome to Reading FC Nelson. Anyway, let's talk something slightly different in the final hour of the show, as we always do, and I'm absolutely delighted to say that this week is something completely different. Uh, At this time of the week, uh, we'd like to talk about all sorts of different sports and have you ever considered uh, taking up these sports that's what i'm going to ask you in a few moments time esports have absolutely massively grown in size in the last few years you can now even get a degree in the sport i believe yeah. at staffordshire <laughs> university i'd love to talk to my studio guests about that in a few moments time uh, how can you get in, involved at a local level? But I'm going to introduce you to my great studio guests who are going to talk all about esports. And it's nice to say that Jem, Floyd, and Quinton have joined me in the studio. Good evening, gentlemen. How are you? Hey, Rita. I'm great, Hello. thank you. How are you? I'll start. I'm good, thank you. Very good, thank you. Thanks for, for making it in. I know it's slightly snowy out there, but Jem, I'm going to start with you. Tell us all about esports. For those of you, those out there that have never heard really about esports, what is it? So esports is um, essentially as competitive gaming. Um, the E stands for electronic sports, 
And so in its simplest form, it's people competing against each other. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And how much has this sport grown in size? Because it is now absolutely massive, isn't it? Well, yeah, um, it's a juggernaut. Um, gaming is the biggest entertainment industry in the world. And the UK is one of the largest markets. So naturally, whereas gaming's always been so huge, the competitive nature has always been the next evolution, natural evolution. And in the last couple of years, because we've seen such diverse companies and people getting involved, it's just growing and growing and growing. Fantastic. And how did you get into it? Or have you just um, grown with it <laughs> from uh, year dot? <laughs> well, actually, um, I studied games technology and mathematics. So I learned how to develop these games. So the programming, the animation, the art, the physics, the math, all that fun stuff. And so I've always had a passion and interest in gaming. And, but I've also got a little bit of entrepreneurial tendencies. So in the last um, few years, I was thinking, I was involved in some music stuff, but I decided to jump back into what I love, which was gaming. And so one way was to build, start building a business and an events company around bringing people together involved with gaming. Fantastic. Well, we'll talk about that in a few moments time. You're a man of many talents, clearly. And uh, let's, go, <laughs> let's go over to Quentin next. Hello, Quentin. Good evening to you. Hello. Good evening, Rita. So tell us all about your, your love of esports then. Why should, why should anyone get involved? Uh, esports is, is really good. And my love of esports as well is the fact that everybody can get involved in it. Um, and it's really grown over the years, as we just heard and discussed as well. And just the fact that it's it's so viral now, um, and it's just so competitive, and it's, it's it's now available to watch, which is obviously again because of the infrastructure is actually allowing that to be viewed. Um, so that's, that's in what ways do people view it then? If uh, for um, those who, so you know yeah. new to esports start here, okay? Because you, okay. you might be your world every <laughs> single day. But tell us all <laughs> how you can even watch it. So if you don't want to play, you can watch. Of course, um, there's there's sort of platforms like Twitch. Um, I don't know if anybody's had Twitch. Obviously, they can watch it live, stream it. Um, obviously, there's been a few big competitions that people can actually see, um, and it's almost like um, if anybody likes watching Sky Sports of Premier League football, you can actually watch people playing games against each other with the best in their areas, etc, etc. Yeah. Excellent. So, Very competitive. Yeah, Jeff. Yeah, so um, yeah, you've got like Twitch, obviously, that's the main platform that most gamers will know, um, where people will stream. So essentially, same Rita, if we're playing, you know, FIFA right now, <laughs> anyone around the world can Bring it on. Yeah. Bring it on. <laughs> I'm up for set it. That up. Set that up. <laughs> um, anyone could come in and watch us live. And, you know, if you're charismatic or you're funny or you're just really good at the game, you'll build like follow subscribers in a similar way to YouTube. And obviously, um, YouTube another big platform as well for gaming. And you've got Facebook gaming as well. Facebook are trying to jump in there to watch people live and mix and a few others. But Twitch is the dominant one in the industry. It's fantastic. And it's fascinating to hear this. Is I'm taking all these notes. I've got a six and seven year old. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a funny feeling that I'm going to need all this knowledge as well. So last but not least, Floyd, good evening to you. How good are you? Good evening, Rita. How are you doing? You right? Very good. Thank you. Tell me all about... <laughs> Um, tell me all about the organisation that you're part of, and you're even wearing the T-shirt from that organisation as well. <laughs> love it, love the branding. I, I, I need to represent the top, you know. Right. Uh, you know I've got absolute love for the company. Um, yeah. So in terms of um, for gaming, I, was, I, I think I keep it personal, really. Um, everyone in my house plays games. Everyone has. We, we fight over the um, the TV. Uh, we're actually thinking of <laughs> we're actually thinking of dedicating one of the rooms to um, uh, to to gaming, really, truly. Um, part-time study during the day um, but yeah I mean um, gaming's massive 33 million people play games in, in the UK um, in terms of it in terms of absolute um, bags of money and in the UK particularly good at it you know from a competitive perspective we've got some great prospects <laughs> um, yeah I, I, say, oh, I think we are I think we're massive um, I think in, in my household um, the, um, the girls who, who play, play um, Fortnite um, they won some tr tremendous trophies and um, they're very competitive and I think um, from what I watch on YouTube um, Facebook live um, yeah UK is really, you are really smashing it we're representing but again you know uh, we're the sixth largest um, uh, gaming uh, uh, um, country so yeah, I mean, um, six largest. Six okay, largest, yeah. so who's the first? Is it? Is it the? Well, I'm going to guess, but uh, who, who is it? Who do you think? Guess. Oh no, no, I'm not going to guess. <laughs> so I'll get completely wrong. No, go and tell me. Okay, it's China. China. Is it? One. Okay, that was not who I had in my mind. Who did you have in mind? No, I'm not going to tell you. You have to say. <laughs> well, you have to say no. But uh, you know, I half said it, didn't I? And I said, no, yeah. I'm not going to talk about that. So China's one. Moving swiftly on. Who do you think is number two? <sighs> well, I know who's sixth. Um, <laughs> 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 I don't know. So, uh, let me let me go for a slightly obscure answer. I don't know. It'll be in European country in Europe. 
top 10 make up a lot of European countries, but it's not a European Is country. Is it not? Okay, North America, US. Yeah, yeah? US. okay, US is two. Number three. Uh, oh, right, we could be here a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Germany. We'll go Germany. Well, Germany's actually number five. So you've got China number one, mm -hmm. America number two, um, number three is Japan, number four is South Korea, Germany is number five, and then number six is the UK. Interesting, I see. Right, tell me all about your organisation. You know, but back to Floyd. Mm -hmm. You know, the the the, the, Mar the, the Ma Mavril organisation, if I pronounce that perfectly, as I'm, I'm sure Mavril, I did. Yeah, I mean, um, um, <laughs> Joe will probably be able to explain it better than I am, but um, because he's the founder. But um, uh, Mavril is made up of um, two words, two words, which is Maverick um, and Showreel. So you're taking the map and and the real, put it together uh, to make to make my rule. Um Jen, tell us more as the founder. Yeah, oh, yeah, obviously, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the concept of putting it together. Yeah. So we're essentially we're um, a grassroots esports company. So we're focused on trying to help nurture and find the next um, competitive gaming players, which are the esports stars. Um, so we focus on holding events and local tournaments up and down the country um, to allow people to come and enjoy their favourite gaming titles. Um, on top of that, we will also be releasing our own games, like our own little indie games, um, which is planned to be released later on this year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's us in a nutshell. Fantastic. And I, I take it that um, this is a massively growing market then. So, you know, there's a lot of people that will be listening to the show right now mm. and go, oh, hang on. just one second. So, we're talking about gaming. <laughs> But now we're saying actually it's a completely massive industry correct, yeah. of entertainment where you don't only play the game, yes. you compete, yes. but you're watching it as well. Yes. Is that right? That's correct, yeah. Um, and this is this is why it's growing so quickly because obviously, um, being very honest, like not every not everybody's going to be on the football pitch, for example. I use that example. You know, everybody can play, everyone can build up their skills and everybody can compete. Um, and obviously what Mavril's doing is actually now bringing it into a space um, so people can actually come in and compete and actually join in um, and obviously then from the grassroots upwards is actually bringing the community together the actual nucleus of the community so mm -hmm. it's really really quickly growing um, but it, it's, it's lovely to see the process at the same time well Jim, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question that could be on certain people's minds here but, <laughs> but it, it, I'm gonna, with a controversial question nice. okay uh, <laughs> Is it really a sport as such then? Ooh. If it's an oh, Rita, how could you have she asked that? Yeah, she went I went there. there. <laughs> I went there. Um, some, that has been a, a debate, but there's actually a lot of um, research, scientific research that shows that the level of precision, the speed of thought, and um, the actual health benefits of actually playing games they classify as a sport so for example the IOC the International Olympic Committee um, have already began the process of putting esports into the Olympics and it will be coming in the future games and last year in, in the Winter Olympics it was actually featured um, in the Korean Winter Olympics I think South Korean Winter Olympics so it's already been considered a sport and I would say it's no not too dissimilar to say in a sport such as where you stand on a sport such as archery or even potentially golf which isn't necessarily physically strenuous but there's a lot of mentally that's going on that interesting comparison I thought you might mention a game like snooker as well actually and <laughs> which has been a, well, uh, sorry that's a terrible example because it's not an Olympic <laughs> sport actually but uh, in terms of uh, my um, um, my naughty question about <laughs> is it a sport or not but, it, but you see why certain people Definitely. might be asking that question also should they there may be some people that ask the question well actually if, you, if you're that good at from a technical perspective playing it in, a, in an e-sense yeah, how yeah. about getting out there and playing it for the real sense but actually are you going to tell me guys that actually you could do both clearly you could be brilliant at both I'm sure yeah, there are yeah, lo loads of professional footballers that are very, very yeah. good, right? So, you know, yeah, as well. so yeah. I'm, I'm an Arsenal fan, get throw that in there. Um, <laughs> yeah. and, um, Meza Ozil, he spends a lot of time on Fortnite and there's mm. a lot of other professional football players who spend a lot of time playing games. And mm. um, Neymar is another one who streams and there's a lot of actually players that spend a lot of their time in the not on the pitch playing games and streaming. Arsenal, huh? Yes. Some, yeah. well, some are, yes. Uh, any other Goonies in the in the room? Yeah. I'm actually on the other side of last week, so we're in Chelsea fans. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a bit of uh <laughs> Floyd, you can tell me you're a, you're a Spurs fan. Just to make it interesting. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm actually none. I'm actually none. I'm just neutral. Be, be a massive it. FIFA uh, yeah. fan though, in any FIFA, sense, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah what, what is your favourite? Well, come on, what is your favourite esport to play? Um, my my favourite. Well, do you know, uh, looking back, my favourite game would be um, Zelda. Um, it's very long-winded games, but uh, but resolving pu puzzles. You know, going through the game is it, quite long. Um, as my favourite game uh, up to now, my favourite game is uh, more now, more, uh, more recently released. 
uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man's a really good game, you know, I'm a massive Marvel fan, you know, so that's another good game for me, but mm -hmm. yeah. Let's go around the room then and ask the same question then. What about you, Jem? My favourite game? Yeah. Or games? Ooh, game. That might be yeah, a bit, yeah, a bit so mean. Yeah. That's tough. Um, <laughs> about 30, I love, I'm thinking. <laughs> I've got quite a few, so I'll try to keep it, keep it minimal. Um, I love Super Smash Bros. Um, so it's like a Super Smash Bros. Melee. It's like a Mario and all the Nintendo characters basically thrown in together, a lot of them, and it's like a platform fighting game. It's really cool. Um, I really like the Splinter Cell series. That's a stealth based game. Oh, that's a really good game. Like, yeah, Splinter Cell. <laughs> I like that game. Yeah, <laughs> I really like Splinter Cell. Um, what, what, so, sorry, what type of game was that? It's a st it's stealth based. So basically, stealth -based. it's like a third person shooter, but it's. Um, it's very much focused on stuff as opposed to like just run out there and take everyone out. Strategy. It's a strategy. It's more yeah. strategic. Yeah. It's Tom Clancy. Um, okay. And you play as a team, don't you? In these sort of senses, or in, do you? Or? In that one, it's more of a solo. You do have a cooperative mode on some of them, but that one is predominantly single player campaigns. Um, in terms of co-op, if like if I like which co-op games I like, I would um, Rainbow Six Siege. Um, it's a very tactical. Um, FPS first person shooter. Mm. Um, also, um, I'm learning a lot, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. <laughs> Another good one would be um, Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Say, um, oh, I love Call of Duty. Yeah. 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 Classic. Modern Warfare 2 is the best Call of Duty. <laughs> you, even I have played Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to surprise. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you had every right to actually be quite surprised. Which right. one? Can you oh, remember? I have no idea, but this is a way back. I don't even know what. I mean, one of the early days of uh, okay, Call of Duty. Hopefully it's Modern Warfare 2, because that's the best one. Is it? Out there, yeah. yeah. All Call of Duty fans listening, I hope they agree. <laughs> I, can tell, I can tell I'm going down a road of mm. uh, almost, uh, you know, it, it could be a massive discussion point of your favourite Call of Duty, uh, etc. But moving swiftly on, I'm going to ask Quentin the same question. So what are your, your favourites out there? What, what would you like to play? If you could play any games right now, what would they be? Okay, if it was any games right now, um, I have always loved the football games. So I've always had this com competition between FIFA and obviously for everyone knows Pro Evolution as well. There's always this big battle between the licenses and who's got what and who hasn't got what as well. But yeah, FIFA has always been one of the games that I've always played. Um, yeah, definitely FIFA. And you're pretty good. Um, I'd like to say everyone, <laughs> everyone thinks they're good until they play somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so I think I'm good. Um, obviously, I don't know until I actually come across somebody else, which is why, again, at Mavril, this is why we bring everyone together yeah. I mean, to see who's the best. Yeah. We actually brought them together um, in at Reading Football Club, and it was a great atmosphere. You know, a huge turnout. Um, and everyone, everyone was um, battling against each other. Um, and again, it comes back, back to the community. Tell, tell us more about that then. Tell us more yeah, about so, the Reading um, Football Club. So we had we had an event in at, at Reading Football Club. Um, if I I'm like a ton of people, look, we literally to the max, um, and everyone competed against each other um, in, in twos. So um, we we took down in tournaments um, until um, we got the final winner. But it was a great great turnout, you know. Um, along the sides, you've got parents, you know, kids. Um, people actually brought their own chair to, <laughs> to, sit, yeah, to sit down um, and food. You know, it was, um, it was a great atmosphere. Um, Reading Football Club loved it. Mm -hmm. um, um, and yeah, if you, if you go, if you go, if you go yeah. onto um, mm -hmm. our, our, our Marvel page, you, you actually see, see the event. I pitched on the day as well. Um, it was really good. Floyd, Quentin and Jem in the studio with me. Final hour of the show on BBC Radio Berkshire. Talking something slightly different in terms of esports. We're going to talk plenty more in a few moments time. But time for a tune. And this is Rather Be by Clean Bandit. Right then. <laughs> I've got to ask you what type of music you like. I like this. I like this. <laughs> I, like this. I, like this. I could do this. <laughs> Come on, take it on. Gary B in it. Not, I'm not saying not your job. I like, <laughs> I like speaking to <laughs> them. Oh, I, I like see. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. If you ever need someone. That's, that's the thing, actually. It's just enjoying it. You've you been to a radio studio I've, before? I've been, to, I've been to what? I went to your last studio when you was up in Cabbage Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, we did something with Bridget. Um, okay. And that was when I was doing stuff with Stoner. I'm um, the blind rapper from Reading. Oh, right. And so okay. we, we did come in and did a music session on there. But Bridget's this is, awesome. She's great. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's, she is brilliant. So. Oh, so, so You've seen, you met our new home, a bit easier it's to get to. It's beautiful. It's much better, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. Actually, no, it's I need to be a bit, unfair. It's a bit unfair. The venue, though, you're the cabbage one was. Oh, uh, exactly, that's what I mean. Stunning. That's unbelievable. Yeah, um, absolutely I, I, always, I used to describe it as going to like a National Trust, um, <laughs> you know, place every yeah. time. It used to yeah. be brilliant to get to. But, National Trust. Yeah, this is far closer <laughs> for me, so. Oh, okay. I'm a bit, I'm a bit you live in like East Reading? No, I live in, uh, yeah. Well, uh, 
East Reading. Yes, it is East Reading. Yeah, well, I live up in Woodley. So yeah, right. Yeah. Just down the road. Yeah, so that's um, much easier for you. Yeah, I normally buy, so I work here on Saturdays and Tuesday nights. Right. And, um, I normally cycle in, but I chose not to tonight, funnily enough. Yeah, and, uh, so it's a good night not to, yeah. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, made it, I've made it, you know. Yeah. Right, what do we want to talk about next then? What, what, what do you so what some of your events coming up or um, something like that? What do we've you got want some stuff that we got, we've got a few events but we can't necessarily speak about them per se, oh, apart from I can okay. um because they're not officially launched. I can kind of just around them. Uh, no, uh, okay, but so I definitely want to ask you how people can get involved. Okay. So is that something that you can yep. That's go right. into and it is Mavriel, right? Yeah, 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 that's okay. yeah, that's okay. right. Yeah. Uh, so how people can get involved? Uh, inclusive, what else? I would like to talk about some of the inclusivity. inclusivity of gaming. Okay. Um, one in of the things sense? here, in terms of that, regardless of your race, background, gender, because yeah. at our events we have children, you know, SEN children, yeah. um, disabled children, that's all right. sorts coming into the right. event, and everyone's on an equal playing field. Um, that's, that's a great point. So yeah, let's. let's I, I want to touch on that. About that um, yeah. And even one of our players. I thought we used to stop talking to the mic. Oh, yeah. yeah sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that training now. That's really mean to say. I know, that's absolutely. Yeah. I've, I've got. Marie's done a brilliant job of saying talking to the mic. You know what, I remember last time it was because when I was with Deontay at, at your old place, yeah. he, he was too far from the mic and we did it, trying to just nudge him into the mic all the time. I had to keep saying, yeah, come close to the yeah. mic, so I remembered. Um, Thank you. That's no, yeah. true. It's brilliant. So I would like to talk about that. Yeah, um, okay. And also, one of our players who won our last event, they actually are going through the E-Premier League. Um, and the E-Premier League is basically, it's a massive <laughs> tournament going on between the Premier League and all the Premier League football clubs, so all the big Arsenal's United, everyone. Oh, right. And FIFA, EA themselves. And so you can basically, if hang you're on, a FIFA hang player... On. FIFA, e EA themselves? So it's called the E-Premier League. Mm -hmm. oh, I'll just ask you about that. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 I'll listen. Yeah, yeah. I'll ask you the question at the time. That yeah, might be yeah. so inclusivity as yeah. um, such. And um, basically... We're gonna have we're looking we're looking at a nationwide tour. We can kind of touch on it, but I won't go. No, don't go down a okay, road that you don't want to talk it. about. No, okay. as in you know whatever you're comfortable talking about. I don't mind yeah. what you talk about, but whatever you want to talk about. Yeah. So but we'll I focus. Think too we'll focus on those two for now, and then we'll right. see where we spin off. Um, what type of music do you guys like? And I'm no doubt I won't have it, but uh, anything um, cheesy or, or sort of a bit old school. I'll ooh. try finding quickly. For ten seconds. I love. I listen to, to Magic recently. I love Janae Aiko. I do. Janae Aiko. Sorry, did you? I've listened to Magic recently. They've got some really some real goldy oldies in there. But some Lionel Richie. Oh, Lionel Richie. Okay. Are we all on that page? Yeah, no, let's go with Lionel. Start us all listening. Jim's definitely not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, out now. Thank you for it's that. It's coming up big. Dancing on the ceiling. Dancing on the ceiling. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. I don't mind anyway. Nazim, yeah. 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 if you're Don't watching, I'm about to give you a shout out on the mic. Nazim right. is who Here we go. Ten seconds. I'll hit a stab and then it's sort of wrong. Right. BBC. 28 minutes past nine, extra time on BBC Radio Berkshire. I'm Rita Green, thank you so much for joining me. And I'm delighted to say also joining me this evening in the studio are some lovely gentlemen that I'm learning loads from. It's Jen, <laughs> Quentin and Floyd, and we're talking esports. And Jen, you were telling, you were just talking to me uh, a moment ago about uh, the growth of sport, the e-sport, and how, how popular it is. But but it actually doesn't just cover uh, maybe um, you know certain certain age groups as such or type of people. It, it really does cover all types of people, doesn't it? Yeah. So um, it's a it's a massive demo, and obviously, like Floyd mentioned earlier, it's like approximately thirty three point six million gamers. So it's almost one in two in the UK who are gamers. And but one of the most beautiful things about all of our events are how inclusive they are. And so we have people of all races. Um, various ages, different backgrounds, um, both male and female, and you know, children with you know special educational needs like SEN children and children with various disabilities who come along, and everyone's on an equal playing field. Everyone feels comfortable. If they love FIFA, they come along for FIFA. If they love, you know, Fortnite, they come along for Fortnite. So that's one of the most present things which I don't think gets um, enough recognition. How mm -hmm. inclusive and inviting it is for everyone because all you're doing is you're picking up your controller or your mouse if you're a PC gamer mm -hmm. and your keyboard and then you're off. Fantastic. And how many, uh, what, what type of numbers come along to these events then? Uh, Mavril events then, Quentin? Well, when we was at Reading, um, we actually 
well, we reached full capacity basically. It was actually completely sold out. Um, so, yeah, there's about 60. About 60 people, yeah. 160. 160 people, yeah. 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 Well, so basically, we had to get more seats in. Um, so we bought a chair. We people to, bought a chair with <laughs> it. Bring, yeah, people were bringing chairs, there's bring more seats in as well. Um, so, there's full capacity as well. Um, and it's really good to see many people turn up, um, as, as we said, all different backgrounds, all different general uh, races, um, and everybody playing with each other. And everyone, like I said, if you come to play FIFA, you come to play FIFA, which was actually the tournament at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a really good turnout. Right. And, and, and so, 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 you know, in terms of uh, competition then, Floyd, you know, who are the top uh, esports sort of gamers in the country that you can, you can, I'm putting you on the spot here, but are they, are they, household, are they household names? You know, I take it that they're, you know, some of the best in the, in the land are well known or actually, could they be anyone out there for that matter? Or is I it not? Tell me more about that. Is it, is it not about that actually? About being the best? Is it, or is it about just taking part? I think, I think, it's, I think for me it's about, it's about taking part. I mean, um, uh, just for example, at Reading, uh, Reading Football Club, um, everybody enjoyed the fact that they could say that they're best and compete with each other, and um, the atmosphere was fantastic. Um, and the thing is, it literally, is, I think it's that cohesion, it's that cohesion, and it's, it's the taking part which absolutely counts here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a really good experience. Really Great. Good experience. Well, Jim, Jim t tell us all about the E Premier League. I like the sound of this. Yeah. So, um, ironically, there'll be a lot of football fans listening as it's the nation sport. Um, the E Premier League was basically the chance for anyone within the UK to represent their favourite Premier League football club. So, for example, like I said, I'm an Arsenal fan. So, you could, if I wanted to, I didn't enter it myself, but you could qu try and go through the qualifying rounds through FIFA and you'd go through a, a phase of tourna a tournament basically and if you <coughs> go through and you progress and then you win you basically get to represent your favourite club and so one of our actual winners um, of our last event um, a young gent called Nazim I hope Nazim you're listening Evening um, Nazim Yes, he, he won <laughs> our, our last event our FIFA event he's actually in the E Premier League at the moment he's competing to represent West Ham so we wish him the best I, I want to find out the uh, Reading FC representative then. For, um, that's your that's your goal. You need to let me know. Yes, we will. Uh, well, Eight one three double three. Sorry, you mess with the word, word box. If we, if we know who that is, no, genuinely, I'd love to know. I'd love Definitely. to know. Okay Definitely. then. All right. So this is E Premier. So it's about representation of your Premier League club. Oh, yeah. That's a bit and of pressure. It's, yeah. It is, it's massive pressure, especially because you have the publisher. You have EA um, mm -hmm. Electronic Arts, the guys EA Sports, the guys who make FIFA, um, and they're like the biggest publisher in the world. And so then obviously you've got the Premier League as well, so then you've got another biggest, the large, one of the largest sporting bodies in the world, so bringing those two together. Can you become a pro in, in you know, can you can you be a pro in uh, in eSports or not yes. yet? Oh, yeah? So okay. professional, there are professional players and professional teams. Um, there's professional eSports players who are making six, seven figures a year by playing games. So I had to say that, say wow. that really slowly because some people don't really believe it when they hear it. Yeah. <laughs> say say it again, because I think we needed to hear and that. Professional gamers out there, professional esports stars who are essentially professional gamers have made seven figure salaries. Um, a streamer who's not necessarily some gamers would debate as whether he's an esports star or not, but the top streamer in the world who was the most famous, um, Ninja, um, he made $10 million last year um, and he predominantly plays Fortnite. So it's a wow. serious business. It really is, and I think there'll be a lot of people listening out there that uh, that aren't, just aren't aware mm. of uh, esports at all. And actually, I, I think it, it, I'm, I'm going to ask the naughty questions out there, or, or naughty <laughs> thoughts, <laughs> and say, actually, you know, I didn't did a I didn't know it was really that popular yeah, or as big yeah, as this, yeah. but also um, that uh, there are real you know professionals out there as such that play this all the time, and and, yes. and, and it sounds to me, gentlemen that it is incredibly entertaining as well. So you, even if you're not that good at it or have no interest whatsoever, you know, it should be about going along and watching a few events, do, would you say? But well, the thing is, it's, it's the infrastructure that's allowed that as well, because obviously the internet is now grown and everything's easy accessibility as well. So now it's, it, it's just very addictive. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very enjoyable at the same time together as well. So now, as, as I said, it's something where it's, it is on the rise and it's where not everybody knows about it, um, but it's now coming to the point where it's like, well, I didn't know that it was possible to do that. Mm -hmm. so, so Floyd, I'm gonna leave the, the last question to, uh, for you, the big one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I don't think it's a very. I don't think it's, it's very. I don't think it's a very difficult one actually, because I think there's a trend here. But Ooh. can you see esports being in the Olympics? Personally, yes. I think. I think so. Um, um, and I can't. I can't see why not. It's a very competitive um, um, uh, game. Get, get, well, game is very competitive. 
and um, it generates a lot of money and there's a lot, a lot of people involved in it. Um, it brings excitement. I can't see why not. And, and I, I, I guess, eating too much space. Yeah, and I guess it's an argument to say that, uh, we, is it 33, what did you say? 33.6 million gamers in the UK. 30, it, just in the UK? Just in the UK. Just in the UK. Um, yeah. um, that is awfully more, and I'm doing this without any factual numbers behind it, but I'm going to take a little bit of a guess here that there Got are me, some Olympic, yeah, I'm putting my, putting my neck on, neck out there, anyway. uh, but, uh, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks for the, uh, thanks for, thanks for yeah. the encouragement, um, but, but saying that there are some Olympic events that may be uh, far less um, in, in terms of scale out there, but I guess the Olympics isn't about that. So maybe watch this space. But I love the confidence floor. But do you, do you agree, Quentin, Jim? Do you, are you in the same boat that uh, you're going to see? We're going to see this sooner rather than later. Yeah, um, I definitely believe that. You know, um, there's such backing behind it. Some of the largest brands in the world are trying to get involved. The Audis, you know, the Mercedes, McDonald's, Coca-Cola. Everyone's trying to get their endorsements in on the esports already. Um, Drake, one of the biggest artists in the world, um, co-owns the esports team, which he brought. Well, he's, he invested in last year, um, which is which is huge. And then you've got massive institutes um, such as PSG, Manchester City, um, and you know Sport in Lisbon and other massive football clubs who've actually invested in their own esports team. So because of all the commercial, um, you know, economics that are coming through, it's gonna it's gonna come in and surely because of the sheer eyeballs and numbers that, that is involved in watching these sports people definitely and, it, and it is true that you can get a degree in this as well yes you can there are um, numerous um, universities around the world who are actually offering degrees and some of them if you're real good enough they'll give you a scholarship so you don't have to pay for any tuition and they'll sort you out and incredible <laughs> <laughs> well, I might look into that but uh, maybe, I should, maybe I should start some esports first so then, uh, <laughs> no, but thank you so much gentlemen I've learned so much about esports as you could probably t tell yeah. here yeah, but, uh, it is, and I, and I think that um, you know, watch this space, isn't it? Very much. And thanks. Oh, yes, actually, no. Before you go, we haven't yeah. actually said how people can get involved. Let's do that as the last one. Who wants to take this, Jem? Yeah, yeah. So the best place to get involved is really to follow us on our social media pages um, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the big ones, YouTube, um, and of course Twitch for all the gamers. Um, you can find us there, and Discord as well, which is basically it's a gaming app. The, the gamers will get what I'm saying. Jem's <laughs> <laughs> um, giving me that look. Other people understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's Maverell, so that's M A V R W E L. So M A V R W E L on all the major socials. That's the best place to find out about us. Thank you so much to Jem. Floyd and Quinton who've come in from uh, Maverill who are a local local organisation in terms of esports do get involved with them and uh, as you say find it on all good social media outlets Definitely. I think <laughs> thanks gentlemen and, and to, uh, to close out this uh, particular moment we're going to go to an absolute classic and uh, Floyd I believe this is one of your favourites yeah. it's a bit of Lionel Richie and <laughs> Dance Gun Ceiling <laughs> perfect here we go Lionel Richie thanks very much gentlemen thank you thanks. 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 Yeah, no, I was with him when he messaged yeah. me. Thank you so much, Ogs, for coming. Quinn's getting you. Floyd's getting you in there. Thank you Back out into the arts. Thank, thank you. Bye. Thank you very Bye. much. Bye. Thank you. And you. I'll see you again oh, soon. It's down there. Right, Microsoft just down the road. Microsoft, Oracle. You know. So, Jim, some finishing thoughts. How do you think it went? I think it went really well. You know, um, some people before was asking me, Jim, how do you feel? Blah, blah, blah. And I was always relaxed because most people know me. I'm quite a laid back character. And so I wasn't really stressed about it because I knew it was going to be more of a relaxed, informal um, interview. And so. You know, people will definitely know the name after we said it so many times in there. There's actually a quick, we might have to go through the video and count how many times <laughs> it was said. Um, and it was brilliant um, and went well. We got a message about people locally know about us, parents know people might actually begin to take um, esports a bit more seriously, uh, gaming, and that maybe like their child's not necessarily wasting time um, and that it's a fun thing and bringing community together. Because that point I said on the inclusivity, someone has to walk so we get the lights back. So on step, step, Quint, step, Quint, step, Quint. Step. Oh, yeah, thank you, Quint, thank you. Um, that inclusivity thing's a massive point. If you think about some of the issues we've had, whether it's Brexit or some of the racist issues that were going on in um, football, like when the Sterling, Obama Yang incident with the banana skin and all these other things, gaming brings everyone together. And like I said, 
even those who may be physically impaired or have special educational needs or learning difficulties can come and get involved and they feel part of it so beautiful so thank you, you all. so you feel that um basically you achieve what you wanted out of today yeah definitely you know for me um it's always about attention um you know like i said i'm always a, i'm a gary v fan i'm a grant cardone I'm, i i know about marketing and stuff like that and it's about the attention so now because of that radio show thank you for the bbc for letting us um be involved and inviting us in we've just had new listeners and people who didn't know about us and we had we'd have a different demographic who would necessarily know about us who would have been parents and so on that their children come round and get involved quick can you step again please so we can get the light please yeah yeah, yeah. these are lights are, that's that's efficiency there yeah. thank you um and so yeah i felt i felt good i felt good um about it, it went really well sweet definitely <laughs> Oh, so you do not know when I was like me. I hope you, I hope you are serious game with that Instagram handle, brother. <laughs> Which? No, no. No, that's like me. 